Welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. And hello again, everybody. This is the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian, and she's Carrie. Hello. And uh, how are you today, Miss Madam? I am full of octopus. I am not exactly sure what that what that means. However, I I have two two immediate reactions. One is gross. The other is you probably want to get a hospital then, or am I off? Am I off? You're track? you're so far off maybe offer than you've ever been i don't know i could i've been pretty off before exactly that's my point okay so you you ate something called and i'm not making this up octopus hash for breakfast i did uh-huh well actually actually its technical name is tom's big breakfast and but that sounds kind of tame right and there's no guarantee and but, actually octopus hash but there's no guarantee that tom actually made it I and mean, you don't have any kind of verification of that no tom himself didn't make it but it is in tom's restaurant so i guess that's why he gets to to call it tom's big breakfast All maybe right. that's his favorite it's definitely my favorite and in my opinion it is the best breakfast in seattle all right, so do you ever wonder, like, what was going through someone's head, like, when the first time they grabbed an octopus and they're like, yeah, I could eat this, like, what was, like, seriously, like, they had to be, like, really kind of hungry, or one of those, uh, that, like... Uh, that was what I was going to go with. I was going to go, yep, yeah, hungry. They must have been really hungry, and then went, wow, this is good. Do you, uh, uh, now, you don't watch a lot of television, but there's a show on... Uh, I don't watch any, because I don't have one. R- right, so that was kind of just me so- trying to whittle or like ease that in there but there's a um there's a a cat on the travel channel who goes around um and he eats really weird foods and i can't remember his name i think it's andrew something anthony bourdain not anthony bourdain no he uh he he is a much more of a of a of a andrew zimmer that's his but anthony bourdain's more of a um of a straight laced kind of you know this is what good food is Andrew Zimmer, Zim, Zimmern, I think is his name. He's the guy who goes around and, and like has, he like eats weird, beetles. Like, yes, yes. Like, okay, this is like a, a fried cockroach egg. Yay. You know, and he apparently is not off put by anything culinary. So I'm thinking it was either someone like him or you're right. They were just really, really hungry to try that. Ex- except sauteed octopus is delicious. And I have taken probably thirty different people there to eat octopus hash. Now, how many of them? How many of them were there? How many of them were against their will? You you took people there against their will. How many? I would say that most of them were doing it to make me happy. (laughs) But they all came away going, "That was awesome! Thank you for making me eat octopus hash." Thank you for abducting me and making me eat breakfast. Yes. And the awesome, the even awesomer thing about it is that every time you go, so like every week they change it up. So there's always octopus in it and there's always a poached egg involved, but they change it up every week. So in the 30, 40 times I've eaten it, it's been different every single time. And and one day I took someone and someone who hated Brussels sprouts with a passion. <laughs> and, and and so I persuaded him that he needed to eat octopus hash. So we went and and 
And he went to the bathroom when we got there and I picked up the menu and looked and it, and one of the things in it was Brussels sprouts. So I just hid the menus and said to the waiter, two octopus hash, please. And, and he ate the Brussels sprouts and he didn't know and he loved it. And then I told him there were sprouts and he didn't like me as much. Well, I'm with him on that. You are, <laughs> that is conniving. That is really. But, but the upside was he now likes Brussels sprouts. So, you know, it, it, it ended well. There were no tears. Well, it ended well for everything but the Brussels sprouts because now there's another person who wants to eat them. Like their 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 time is now shortened because of your actions. Like all the Brussels sprouts who are like, yay, we can just enjoy life. Wait a second. What's going on now? But, but that's good because if you want more Brussels sprouts, you just plant more Brussels sprouts and then you get more. That's the cool thing about vegetables. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't so know. many cool things about vegetables. But we'll <sighs> talk about that another time. Yeah. What are we talking about today, speaking of which? We are talking about dairy. Dairy. Bef- okay. Before we get into dairy, though, I do, do want to uh, talk to the audience for just a second. Okay, um, I will. Um, I'll shut up. No, you're going to be participating. You're going to be participating. Oh, too. okay. Um, for folks who are listening, are, did you know that you can you can tell people what you think of how awesome Carrie is on this show uh, by going to iTunes and giving us a good rating and review? You have to be logged into iTunes. You have to have iTunes on your computer. It won't work on your phone or your tablet, but yeah, it'll work on your computer. And you have to log into iTunes and you go and you search for Keto Evangelist Kitchen in the podcast section and give us a rating and review five stars is great and a nice review on why you think Carrie is awesome is even better because that really helps us by uh, allowing more and more people to find us so um, if you are uh, inclined I would I would I would ask that you go give us a nice re- review in iTunes so um, Carrie would appreciate it too she is um, She's uh, staring at me right now as I'm going through this because she didn't know I was going to talk about this. And now she's like, I forgot what I was going to say. And I'm like, well, you're welcome. And then <laughs> that's it. Um, also, social media stuff. Oh, oh, oh hold on. I, I was just going to say, can we move on now? But clearly you're oh, not done. Okay. You just wait. You just hold your horses. Do they have the phrase hold your horses in, in Ingolanda? Yes. Okay. Now, is it because they have horses in Ingolanda? We used to have a lot of horses. Not not so much anymore. Well, we do we do have them, but we used to like ride around on them a lot more than oh. we do now. Yeah. Well, I'm in Texas, so we still do. So, I guess it's an even No trade. comment. Right. <laughs> uh, so social media also. We are on Twitter, Keto Van Kitchen, on Instagram, Keto Evangelist Kitchen. See the difference between the two? Because Twitter doesn't let us have our full name. Curse you, Twitter. But we are Keto Van Kitchen. It's like the Keto Van Kitchen. Like a kitchen in a van, but it's Keto. See? See how that works? It's Keto Van Kitchen. And Carrie's rolling her eyes at me, but you guys can't see it. I, I think she literally saw her brain just now. Uh, that's how hard she was rolling her eyes. Um, it's small. It took a bit of searching. but <laughs> Roll back. Shift to the right. There we go. All right. So it's in there somewhere. <laughs> All right. So on Instagram, we get the, we're the whole name. So Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Instagram. Yes, I know people hate it when we talk about this, but look, if you want to interact with us, that's a good way to do that. If you've got questions about food and food stuffs, that's a good way to find, to get those kinds of answers. Also, you can uh, join Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Facebook, facebook.com slash group slash Keto Evangelist Kitchens. Kitchen. And there's lots of lovely keto cookers in there. Oh, yeah. There's like 15,000 people who are making keto food every day. So people are like, I don't know what to make. And like, well, you got no excuse now because there's a whole bunch. Um, not only that, but Carrie's there. And she's like the queen of keto foods. So you want to know how to do things the right way, she'll tell you. And she's mean about it, too. That's what's great. And she'll, t- she'll straight up tell you, you're an idiot. And then she'll... Um, uh, she'll... Um, I don't even know what the Facebook equivalent of throat punching is, but she does that. So am I making that up or is that? Is that... You, you are such a fibber, Williamson. <sighs> I'm a fibber. All right. Um, it's not true. Carrie's very nice. She she loves it when people uh, try to improve their kitchen skills, and she really likes being a part of that. So Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Facebook, groups 
um, and other social media stuffs. So find us and, you know, start the conversation or whatever's. All right. So there's the shameless plugs for you, wanting to interact with you people. Sorry. Now, we're talking about what now? Dairy. Dairy. Okay. So here's my question then. Are we for it or are we again it? We're for some of it and we're again some of it. <laughs> All right. So which one do we want to start with? The fur or the again? Let's get rid of the again. All right. What are we again it? What dairy are we again? We're again anything with a lot of sugar in it. Such as? Milk. <gasps> milk. All right. Fat-free, 2%, whole milk, right. any kind of milk that comes from an animal. Because this is not the episode where we're going to talk about nut milks. Right. Nut milk is not dairy. Now, no, here's, it's not. I, I, and I, I know that because it doesn't come from a cow. <laughs> There's a joke there that I do not want to... Um, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. So... Um, Here's the thing. Um, here's the here's how you determine whether or not something is dairy. Generally speaking, it's got lactose in it, or its precursor had lactose in it. That's basically the definition of what's dairy. So, um, when you're talking about stuff like almond milk, but it's got milk. It's milk. No, it's 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 chemically derived from almonds, and they and they color it a certain color, and that's why it looks like it's milk. And they just call it milk, and that's fine. Whatever. That's not real milk. We're talking about dairy, which is coming from a cow, um, specifically a cow, although there are other kinds of quote unquote dairy that are like goat cheeses and goat milks and stuff like that. They would fall into the same kind of category, though. Um, right. So, so although, uh oh, since you mentioned the goat, oh boy, it is true in the world of food sensitivities and stuff that a lot of people who can't have dairy actually do okay with goat dairy as opposed to cow's dairy right. so if you are one of those people that can't do goat dairy you might uh, sorry can't do cow dairy you might want to have a try of goat dairy and see if but that, that's talking specifically to the food sensitivity people or the allergy people not the keto people right so there's two there's two major components to dairy that people are either sensitive or allergic to, and that's lactose or uh, or casein. Um, one is a sugar, one is a protein, and there are specific um, uh, enzymes that uh, that can, that deal with both of them. And some people don't have those enzymes, one or the other or both, and it makes them very sensitive to dairy. You've heard the term lactose intolerant. That's basically what they're saying is they can't break down that that milk sugar. So it causes gastrointestinal distress to some degree or another and frequent trips to the bathroom. Okay, so now... It is also true, since we went down that road, uh -oh. that about 50% of people who are gluten intolerant are also casein intolerant. Yeah. So if, you, if you're gluten intolerant, and by that I mean that you actually have symptoms that that you celiac no not celiac celiac yes but also there you can be what is it called uh non celiac gluten there's a oh, there's just, an acronym for okay, it yeah, but you're just sensitive so, to, to and gluten. i am one of those okay. i am genetically have a, a intolerance to gluten I actually got my DNA done, and it's there in big red flags. So I don't have celiac, but I oh, I gotcha. do not. I'm intolerant to gluten. Fifty percent of us who are intolerant to gluten are also intolerant to casein. So just you know, if you're if you do struggle with gluten, you may just want to check out the casein thing in case you're also intolerant to that. I like the phrase "I got my DNA done." It sounds like I got my toes done. <laughs> And and like your DNA is now polished with a nice little extensions. That's what it sounds like to me. Is that not true? Is that not? Am I? Well, am I the close? the downside is you don't get a leg massage or you know anything else. <laughs> right, right. They just like take... you do when you get your toes done. So I'm, you know, 
Plus, it was a lot more expensive than having my toes done. So, you know, there was downsides, but getting my DNA done was actually one of the best things I've ever done. Now, does it in turn out? Life. Does it turn out you're actually Hungarian now? Is that what you found out? I am not Hungarian, but I am two point eight percent Neanderthal. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Huh. And point six percent Spanish. Oh, I thought that was the same thing. No offense to any Spanish people. <laughs> no, all right. Those are those those are my continental jokes, as they say, because you know, Neanderthals found in France. They're really close to Spain. Just I also have the gene that makes me think cilantro tastes like soap. Oh yeah, I think I have that too, except not soap. Is there a separate gene that thinks that cilantro is just really horrible? I don't like it. Doesn't even <laughs> like I don't even care what it tastes like. It's just nasty crap. And I also have the gene that stops my pee from stinking after I eat asparagus. Okay, now we're getting you into You win a... some, you lose some. <laughs> I don't know which one that is, but this has definitely gone off the really weird side now. So, um dairy. I... <laughs> so, let's get back to dairy. Uh <laughs> all right, so milk in all its uh various uh permutations right out, right? Because it's got too high of sugar content and not not high enough fat content. So for folks who don't know, whole milk, okay, so when you look at skim milk and you look at 1% and 2% milk, whole milk is actually only roughly 4% milk fat. So when they when they start removing the amount of fat, that's when they get the 2%, that's when they get the 1%, and that's when they get the skim milk. They're, they're taking more and more out. So whole milk itself only has 4% uh, fat in it. That's why it's not considered a good source of, uh, of, of dietary fat for, from a keto perspective. And it's still got a lot of lactose or sugar in it. So that's why. Yes? And half and half. Now, for non-Americans who are going, what in the world is half and half? Half and half is kind of half whole milk and, and half not. Oh, oh, it's kind of halfway between whole milk and heavy cream, which is double cream everywhere else in the world. Right. So it's kind of like a, it's like what the rest of the world calls single cream, but not not as fat as single cream. Yeah. So half and half is one of those situations where I would never use it, but it's better than milk, and it's there are worse choices. You know, if that's. If that's the only alternative, it's you've better got. than milk because there's more fat and less sugar. Right. But but compared to heavy cream or double right. cream, right. it's got way more sugar in it than that. So we would always recommend don't even do half and half. Right. I mean, if you're out and about and it's all there is, then either go without or or go with half and half. But if you have any kind of choice, then ditch the half and half okay. and go and and the single cream and go with double or heavy cream. I have uh, okay. This is a regular on our show. I have to do the pet peeve portion of the show, of this particular statement. Um, all right, so I, 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 one of the things that sticks with me, because I was an English major, I was a philosophy major, words mean things, right? And, and there, words have discrete meanings that are independent of other words. When you ask for cream in a coffee shop, especially if it's a national or international chain of coffee shops that may or may, na may or may not rhyme with bar stucks, you want to ask for heavy cream and then verify. I mean heavy cream, not half and half. Because when you say, I'd like cream, what they hear is half and half. For some reason, they don't understand that cream is not half and half. Right? And they work in a coffee shop. So make sure you're very explicitly clear about that. Because a lot of times people order cream and they get half and half. And then they can't figure out why uh, things aren't working for them. Right. Okay. We're, we're in agreement there. Yes. Um, okay. So. Also, the, in America, people get confused because, of course, American manufacturers love to confuse us because it makes us spend more money. Um, whipping cream and heavy whip, whipping cream and heavy cream are all the same. Well, whipping cream and, and heavy cream, there's about 2% fat difference. So yeah. whipping cream has marginally less fat in it than does heavy cream or heavy whipping cream. So whipping cream, heavy whipping cream, heavy cream, all good. Right. All good. 
don't don't I, they're really not different there's a tiny percentage of fat less D don't worry about it just if it's got whipping and cream or heavy or any combination thereof in the title all good right so so let's recap so far where we are we're again all the milk but we're we're uh for half and half it's we it, i would prefer that you not but if you have to have something in your coffee, for example, and you don't have any other alternatives, there are worse choices. However, if you can get away with not having it, don't have it. And then cream is a good one. So are there any other things that we're again? Yogurt. Oh, boy. Wait a second. But, 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 but. But, 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 but thought, we're not, again, all yogurt. Yogurt oh. is its own subcategory of for and against. Right. So we, we've branched off. Yogurt, there's good and there's bad yogurt. So let's talk. Let's talk the bad yogurt. Have you finished mocking me? <laughs> you guys should see. You guys should see the indignation on Carrie's face right now. <laughs> I would just like to publicly apologize for uh, for Brian. I'm just saying that right now. Okay. You're forgiven. Yogurt. Uh, yogurt. So, what's the what's the bad stuff? Yogurt is is a minefield, <laughs> and I have spent an inordinate amount of my life reading yogurt pot labels. Seriously, and and, and most of them like have more sugar than ice cream. And yogurt is perceived to be this fabulously healthy thing, but if you start reading labels, it's like yogurt ice cream right uh less sugar in ice cream well i'm gonna have the ice cream right so you know yogurt makes me crazy um so what there's two things brian would recommend greek yogurt i would and i do full fat whole milk greek yogurt right and but i would caution Still read the label because the difference in in sugars between all the different bland, brands brands <laughs> of whole milk Greek yogurt right. are a, a country mile apart. I mean, just anything from seventeen grams per cup to seven. Right. So you you still I mean hone in. I mean you can like ignore ninety eight percent of the yogurt department. Hone in on the Greek yogurt. But then if you have an array to choose from, read the label and pick the one with the least sugar. Right. However, I do something different because, because I can. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time rereading. I don't eat yogurt very often and I hadn't eaten yogurt for ages and I was at the store the other day and started reading yogurt labels because I just felt like some yogurt. And to remind myself of which were the which were the good ones, and I read all the Greek yogurt. I, I read the non-fat, the low-fat, the full-fat, all of the Greek yogurt labels, and the uh, the Greek yogurt with the lowest sugar by by a good amount, like I want to say four grams, was actually the non-fat Greek yogurt. So while we typically never recommend buying non-fat, low-fat things. Hold on, hold on. Say that, thing, say that one more time. Say that one more time. The non-fat Greek yogurt had, by quite a margin, I want to say four grams, less sugar than any of the whole-fat Greek yogurts. Okay. So. So while, while we would never normally recommend that you buy low-fat or fat-free anything, in this case, I'm going to give you the option or make a suggestion that you could do what I do, which is I bought the low fat Greek yogurt because it had by far the least amount of sugar in. And then when I got it home, I got my s scoop of yogurt and I mixed in a, a splash, actually quite a large splash of heavy cream or double cream. Did so you, I did literally you love it? added my own fat. Right. So I had the least amount of sugar, but I added my own fat. And and so that's the best of both worlds. Did for you me. lob it in though? 
I, I actually, I didn't lob. Okay. I, I typically reserve lobbing for solid things. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, I'm writing this down because that's that's a good distinction. All right, so let me make sure I understand what you're saying because sometimes I don't. <laughs> so you went and you found <laughs> you found the yogurts with the with the the least amount of sugar. Yes. You, you took it home. Yes. Then you added your own in the form of what? Heavy cream. Heavy cream, not sour so cream. So I added the fat separately. So right. I didn't buy the fat in the yogurt in the store. I didn't buy the whole fat version. I added my fat afterwards because the non-fat one had the lowest sugar. Okay. So I, I want to make sure everyone understands. You don't add sour cream. You don't add cottage cheese. I mean, you can. That's fine. But what what sh- what... What uh, Carrie is talking about here is she constructed her own, so she got kind of the best of both worlds by adding heavy cream or double cream or uh, whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. Right, heavy whipping cream to the yogurt. And it got all the fat that she needed, and it got... None uh, of the sugar. None of the sugar, the very very small amount. Now, I do want to say one thing. And this is often a point of confusion for people, so hopefully this helps clear 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 th- clear some things up. The label that you see on the outside of yogurt packaging is uh, when when we're talking about the sugar content is the sugar content prior to the fermentation process. Okay, so we, uh, fermentation is the process of of um, burning sugars to create another substance. Um, so in this particular case, the, the fermentation is done through these different bacteria that are set into the, um, the, the whole milk. And that's what causes yogurt to solidify a little bit. It's what causes the, there's a, there's a whey that's produced, uh, the whole bit. And this is this process. Yogurt is a fermented food. Um, there's another fermented dairy product that's pretty popular called kefir. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I call it kefir, but then I would. Kefir. Uh, <laughs> it's K-E-F-I-R. Um, either way, um, it's... And it's like liquid Greek yogurt. Right. It's, it's exactly what it's like. Um, so the don't get freaked out if you see there's a you know relatively high... If it's full fat, if it is plain, and you see that it's like super high sugars, it's not necessarily the case. But what you can simply do is, is if that's the case, and, and that that wigs you out, and you want to you want to opt for lower sugar content on the label, Carrie's solution is the best. There's also the option of have of getting, um, I believe it's Bulgarian yogurt. Is that? Um, I think it's Bulgarian, right? Have you heard of this? No. Okay, so but if it's from Europe, it's undoubtedly better than anything you find in America. <laughs> You know what's weird about you hearing you say that, honestly, is <laughs> you're not from the continent. You're from Jolly Ole. So I would imagine that, like, you'd have, I mean, I wouldn't imagine that you'd be still, like, go Europe. I don't know. It just seems I, weird to it, me. When, it, when it comes to dairy, I'm absolutely go Europe and go England. <laughs> go England, go Europe. Dairy, all good. Yes. Woohoo. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. So, um, does our cows make great dairy? That is, Your cows make great beef. I think that's on a sign. Like when you first fly over England, that's like the you see us. Our cows make great dairy. Lad, uh, lad, <laughs> right? Um, all right. So, so Bulgarian yogurt is also an option as well, and it's it's a very similar kind of um, of of process uh, as as Greek yogurt. Uh, yeah, it just reminded me, though, know, this whole when I when I came home and essentially added the fat back into my fat-free Greek yogurt. It just kind of reminded me that it is in in a lot of cases it is very easy to add extra fat to pretty much anything. So you know, I I I see on the Facebook group and and on emails people stressing about how to get fat in. It's actually kind of easy. Um, you know, and if you really want to get fat in, you know, have your whole milk yogurt and add some double cream. You know, it, it's not it, it's one of those instances where you can add extra fat in if you need it very simply. Uh, right. So so this is a situation we're we're talking about yogurt specifically. Uh, and first of all, remember what we're saying. 
if it's got a flavor to it, it's not allowed, right? Leave it on the shelf, right? It, it, don't don't even worry about it. So it's easy to add fat to yogurt. So don't sweat that. It's not a problem, right? So if you want to go with the way that Carrie makes her own, uh, constructs her own, that's cool. Um, if you want to just, you know, do the hassle-free one where you get a you find a brand that, that works for you and that's what you want to keep buying, that's fine. As long as it's got no sugar, no added sugar to it, as long as it's got no flavoring to it, it's cool. Um, you can also add um, different things to it. You can sweeten it up with some erythritol or stevia or whatever if you want to, if you don't like the tang. Um, but Oh, tang? The way to get rid of the tang in Greek yogurt is to add a pinch of salt. Salt neutralizes the tang. The acidity of yeah. it? Yeah. So salt is magical. So if you add a little bit of salt, and if you still have a tang, just add, keep adding a little bit of salt until the tang disappears, but it will disappear. <clears throat> okay. So, all right. So we've discussed milk, bad. Yogurt, possibly good, depending on what you get. Mostly bad. What else? Butter. Bah. Now, here's the thing. I'm, this is where Carrie and I sort of deviate just a little bit. And I'll, I'll defer to her on this because I think I'm in the minority. But that doesn't mean I'm wrong. It means everyone else is. That's just the rule. Um, I don't consider butter dairy, even though it comes from a cow. And the reason I don't is simply because it doesn't really contain any lactose in it. It's just pure butter fat. That's, that's, that's why. Now, that doesn't mean I'm right. It's just in my head, that's how it plays out. But let's, But Carrie knows all things food, so I will defer to her. Go. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. Next question. You and I actually agree about Holy butter. Holy crap. Okay. All right. <laughs> So I actually was going to say, and, you know, obviously if you've got a, if you have a major reaction to dairy, you're going to want to test this carefully. But uh, I've read a lot about this and the majority opinion is that butter and actually heavy whipping cream or double cream are okay for people who are dairy intolerant Mm -hmm. because they are pretty much pure fat so there's no casein or minuscule amounts of casein minuscule amounts of lactose so a lot of people who are dairy sensitive can actually have heavy whipping cream and butter without any issues so that's why i added butter because i wanted to cover the fact that some people think it's dairy and some people don't right so we're agreed on on the whole butter thing i don't consider it to be dairy however if you have a huge allergy to um dairy then you're going to want to test that carefully right so and ghee actually ghee is even like butter on steroids there's no steroids in it by the way but it's you know (laughs) ghee is like got the last of the last of the last of any solids that may be in the butter are removed with ghee so if you're dairy intolerant and you can't do butter you can probably do ghee. Right. So once again, let's reiterate, no steroids. No steroids. There was <laughs> yeah, a no figure, figure of speech is all. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, so yeah. Okay. So ghee, also a, a good alternative or, or, or an option. Um, so, um, well, okay. So butter. Butter's re- pretty much pure fat, so it's 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 good. It's a good food stuff for especially for keto. Plus, butter tastes good. I mean, yes, it salt, does. Salted butter, especially. Uh, and I, yes, if you are the type of person who puts butter in your coffee, are you the type of person who puts butter in your coffee, Carrie? Carrie does not put butter in her coffee. Um, if you are the type of person who puts butter in your coffee, then uh, I would recommend that you give salted butter a try. I know it might sound weird. But it's good, so there. Like, like, I don't understand what's happening here. We've moved into like this weird dimension where you and I are suddenly agreeing on everything, and it's kind of starting to freak me out a bit. Well, that means you need to do some soul searching. That's the truth of it. Because <laughs> when I've done, I've done the, the buttered coffee a few times, and I've only ever done it with salted butter, and it's delicious. Right. 
I just prefer heavy cream, but yeah, salted butter. I mean, a lot of people go, "Ew, so dark buttery coffee." Blah, blah. I'm like, no, salted coffee, salted butter and coffee, all good. We're gonna have to do an episode on salt, just on salt, at some point in time. But I do want to say this: that um, there is one thing because uh, I generally. Um, I don't like the flavor of coffee. Like I don't like coffee by its, I don't just like, I just don't like coffee. I drink it because I can't find a better caffeine delivery system really. So I have taken just black coffee and added salt to it, a small amount of salt to it. And it doesn't taste horrible. It, it actually that, well that's that's the whole salt thing right, right. i told you salt is right. magical it is the same with with the greek yogurt the salt takes the bitterness out right. salt cancels out bitter so that's why it tastes better <laughs> right and i uh i've i've uh i've i've rubbed salt on uh people who were really really bitter before and they turned <laughs> they turned really happy and it was kind of nice so um and you ended up in jail <laughs> Well, only the one that got into the guy's eyes. That was a totally, that was a, was, I'll admit that was my fault. So other than that, yes. Um, okay, so uh, milk, bad, yogurt, good or bad, depending. Uh, butter, good. What else? Sour cream. Sour cream. Now, what is sour cream, by the way, for, for folks who don't know? Moldy milk. Okay. So it's called sour cream because basically it's gone through a process to where it has um, aged, let's see, but it hasn't solidified, right? So there's a um, the the cream portion of the dairy product that's come out, and if it's gone through a process to where it's um, like you said, moldy, it's it has it has um, aged a bit. So that's why it's it's got the word sour because it's you know people taste sour cream. It doesn't taste sour. Well, it's not the flavoring; it's the process that it's gone through. Right. So again, full fat sour cream. All right. So full fat sour cream. And um, we're saying this is good or bad? Good. Good stuff, full, right? Full fat all the way. Now, Plus it tastes much better, but yeah, full fat. My wife is a huge fan of sour cream. I never have been uh, a big fan of sour cream. Um, but here's the thing. If you, this is, we're, we're not just talking about dairy apparently. If you take some sour cream, I'm, uh, you're going to thank me for this. If you don't, if you try this, you're going to thank me for this. Get some guacamole. I don't care what kind of guacamole you like, but try it. And then mix it 50-50 with some sour cream. It'll be the best guacamole you've ever had in your life. I can promise you that. Try it. Just try it. You'll love it. You'll love it. Love it. Okay. Buttermilk. No. Buttermilk is disgusting. Moving on. <laughs> but even if you happen to like it, no, because milk, and we've already said right. milk. No, bad. What exactly um, is buttermilk? Do you do you do you have a? It's, it's it's a different kind of moldy milk. Yeah, it's like the liquid left behind once the butter has been churned. Like you, because so what butter is, and you can make your own. You butter. You can actually make it yourself. It's just sour right. milk. You just right. put lemon juice or vinegar in milk and leave it, and then right. the next day you have buttermilk. Yeah, and it's gross. So. um so you can actually make your own butter too. If you have a um, a food processor, you can pour some cream in there and turn it on nice and high. And once it gets past the whipped cream stage pretty quick, it's going to solidify pretty well and you can have your own butter. Well, the old way they used to do that is by churning. They'd have a churn, right? And all that friction, there's liquid left over. That's buttermilk and that is nasty crap. So... <laughs> Lots of people. So okay, I I grew. But it up, has a bunch of sugar in it. It so, has it has yeah, a bunch of sugar yeah. and a horrible taste. I have to say, I grew up in Alabama. Um, so I grew up all over the place because my dad was in the army, and I moved out. I moved all over the place when I was a kid, and I grew up in Alabama. And buttermilk was a thing. Like they drank cartons of buttermilk, and it is a. It's in the U.S. It's a very southern kind of like no kidding drink. They'll just drink it, and I don't know if I've said this enough. Nasty crap. So. <laughs> I'm just no offense, no offense, but it's just it's nasty. So anyway, okay, we don't Let's stop giving it airtime. <laughs> like all the buttermilk's like, yeah, keep talking, sucker. <laughs> cottage uh, cheese, cottage cheese, all good, right? Yeah. However, it is very high in protein, which in and of itself isn't bad unless you eat like an entire tub and then, you know, you've had three days worth of protein in one sitting. However, um, if you're not in the mood for meat, 
or you're on the go or you want something lighter, you can have cottage cheese as a fantastic source of protein. Just be careful how much you eat. Just be aware. Just be careful. Just be aware of how much you eat because it's packed with the stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a really – now, if you can get past the, the texture and – that kind of thing, which I can't, I cannot stand cottage cheese. Um, but it's so I actually find that the small curd and typically the full fat, and again, full fat, we don't know low fat, two percent, whatever. Uh, full fat cottage cheese often is small curd, and I don't know enough about cottage cheese to know whether that's that's a function of all the fat. But small curd cottage cheese is typically whole fat, and the texture in my opinion, is way better than the regular cottage cheese, which is much lumpier. Small curd cottage cheese is much silkier. I, any time the, fra- the word lumpy is associated with food, <laughs> I'm not necessarily... You're done. Pl- I'm done. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I, I would check, please. <clears throat> I'm out. All right, so... No offense, if you guys like cottage cheese, eat all the college, the college cottage cheese that you want. Um, what I, I have to wonder, how did the name come about? Like, what is it called, cottage cheese? Like, is it just I, I, I because they used to churn it in cottages three hundred years ago. I have no idea. Hey, so if anyone listening knows the answer to that, let us know. Um, if you heard the beginning of the episode where Carrie had to suffer through me telling you about our social media places, um hit one of them up and tell us why cottage cheese is called cottage cheese so there there you go all right so um what else so cottage cheese is good just be it's easy to eat an enormous amount of protein right just with wolfing down cottage cheese so you would Um, not want to do like a breakfast of steak eggs and cottage cheese that would be way too much protein yeah all right yeah um and then what are we left with cheese Cheese. Yum. Okay, so cheese is way too broad of a subject. Yeah, just, exactly. So, so we'll probably need to do a cheese episode. Oh, we're gonna have to do more than be... one. If we've done mm-hmm. a, if we've, we're gonna do more than one. We're gonna do more than one cow episode. We're gonna do more than one cheese episode. Okay. But in general, so in general, all I want to say at this point then about well, all I'll say is cheese is awesome. Right. But don't, I mean, you know, fat-free cheese, what, I mean, what in the world is that? Right, no. why bother? Vegan cheese, no. Tofu cheese, I mean, no, 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 no. Proper cheese, full fat, no reduced fat, half fat nonsense, full fat cheese. Right. My two top tips are, if you have a Trader Joe's near you, go there and they have a remarkably exciting array of cheeses. Most of them come from Europe, which means they're awesome and you don't need a bank loan to buy them. <laughs> and the other thing is because I, keto people tend to use a lot of cheese and a lot of shredded cheese don't buy pre-shredded cheese or pre-crumbled cheese. So if you're looking at feta, buy a block and cut it. It's not hard. It'll only take you a minute. Well, can you just, and you can hand if, crumble feta, right? You don't actually, you don't even have to cut it. You can just grab it with your grubby little mitts and just tear parts of it off, right? It'll, it'll crumble in your hand. You could, it depends how cute or not you want it to look. Oh yeah. But <laughs> don't, yeah. don't buy pre-crumbled feta and don't buy pre-shredded cheese because they are filled with Potato a starch. variety of cellulose actually cellulose is fine because we we do not have the ability to digest cellulose so cellulose is fine but if it has potato starch or corn flour or tapioca or there there will be some starchy thing in there to stop it clumping together right because it so you don't want to buy pre-shredded cheese unless you're certain from reading the label that the only thing it has in it apart from cheese is cellulose if it has cellulose you'll you're fine but if it has anything else no right so there's a reason why they they do that and there's a reason why they keep it in the in the refrigerated section the 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 pre-grated cheese the pre um crumbled cheese um it's stuck in the freezer sec or in the refrigerated section because if it gets hot obviously the the it's going to lump together and that's not that's unwieldy so they also know that you're going to put it in your cart and you're going to 
drag it around the grocery store while you're getting the rest of your groceries and it's going to heat up so they don't want it lumping up while you're taking it you know before you get it home so that's why they do that they coat all that stuff with an anti-caking agent uh so <clears throat> it's all, it's much better much easier to get a block get a grater it takes it takes two minutes to grate some cheese and it's uh you know you probably eat less of it because it's more work right as opposed to being able to like just open a bag and pour it into your cereal you know and you can i mean just bring home your in america people in england this is for you in america we can buy like five pound blocks of cheese it's kind of crazy but anyway so just get your five pound block of cheese and bring it home and grate the whole thing up and put it in ziploc bags in the fridge right just do it once grate the whole lot Right. And then you can, you know, for the next week or two weeks or however long that lasts you, you've got shredded cheese ready, which may make the pain of having to shred it yourself a little less. Right. Um, Plus, you only have to wash the grater once. <laughs> right, which is which is great. See what yes, I, it is. See what I did there? I yes. I, I used a a homophone. I was trying to ignore it, but you uh, wanted to draw attention to I it. I so. will always draw attention to uh homophonetic things it's just it's who i am so right. and we love you for who you are brian <laughs> right right uh lies um so <clears throat> grab a block grade it yourself makes it a whole lot easier you can stick it in their own like ziploc bags or whatever uh in the fridge if you'd like um so um the okay so those are hard cheeses there's also stuff like soft cheeses as well say for example cream cheese or brie or something like that where where what's our take on those love cream cheese awesome right. however read the label just in case because there there's some cream cheese that have some really like weird things put in them and so again read the labels find out which one is the best one in terms of no stupid additives or sugar and you're good to go. But cream cheese is awesome. Right. The the typical brand, which may or may not bear the name of a Middle Eastern and <clears throat> North American city that stands for something about brotherly love is pretty much a safe bet. And here's the thing. You, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop some knowledge on people that, might, that might, they may not understand. You, any grocery store that you go to is going to have some sort of off-brand, like store brand cream cheese, right? So where I live, the, the typical grocery store, it's called H-E-B. H-E-B, that's the grocery store. They have an H-E-B brand of cream cheese. Now, if I were to drive... And this is a Texas grocery store chain. They're only really in Texas. If I were to drive every single mile of Texas, I would never find a place that manufactures an HEB cream cheese. What they do is they, they contact the, the, the big manufacturer and they say, we want to private label this and we want to put it in our own packaging and we want to offer it at a lower rate and they get that. So... The store brand stuff, they're not in the habit of producing these products. They private label them from other stuff just so they can charge a cheaper price, right? So generally speaking, a store brand is not necessarily bad in terms of comparison to a name brand. So that's just a, a savings tip. So if you, you, you look at the label and they're identical, buy the store brand. It's the same thing. That's all I'm saying. Plus, my favorite, Trader Joe, if you have one, half the price. Yeah, if you have a Trader Joe, Trader Joe, um, then you, I don't know what to say because not everyone does. And I know. And, and it's sad. And, and I say it in the hopes that one day Trader Joe's will be in every small town across the world. But well, for right now, if you can enjoy it, Trader Joe's cream cheese is awesome and it's half the price. Okay. And I have, okay. I want to bring something else up. Okay. And this is, I've been fooled by this and I want to, I want to alert people. I want to warn people. There is such a thing called mascarpone or mascarpone it is mascarpone yes it is cream cheese it is flavorless dull boring horrible cream cheese and people talk about it like oh it's wonderful i love mascarpone it is so delectable upon the palate but mm -hmm. it's horrible True. 
It is horrible. It, it is in Europe. That's because you haven't had European mascarpone. That's why. Oh no 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 mm-hmm. no 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 yeah. no. The one that I had. Mascarpone is the. It's a no, mascarpone is awesome because it's like ninety eight percent fat. It is the fattest cheese on earth. The one that's that I why had. It's so awesome. The stuff that I had literally tasted like plastic. Like yeah. It was gross. I have had that experience in America. However, when I was a pastry chef and you know, a professional pastry chef, i.e. working, someone was paying me to make pastries, we used mascarpone and it was like the most glorious. I think that we made this thing that I used to call posh pie. That wasn't its name, but I used to call it posh pie. And it was the filling was half mascarpone and half whipped heavy cream All right, mixed look, together. Okay, look, let me tell you this. And look, it uh, was the most glor- – and I won't tell you what we put on top because no, – anyway. No. It, it was the most glorious thing ever. Okay. Here's the thing. Now, you, you've, you've mentioned several food items that you've made before, and, and you've challenged me several times that if you made a certain thing that I would love it. And here's my challenge to you then. You make me some sort of keto pastry – of some kind that has mascarpone in it and I like it, then you win hands down. What do I win? What do I win? You win this, this whole debate about um, whether or not I like food. I'm just going to win a debate. Yeah. What, what do you want? What do you want? What should you win? What? (laughs) That's good radio right there. What should you win? I don't know. I'll think about it. Oh, okay. But the problem is I've got to find a decent mascarpone in America. That's the first hurdle. America. Um, I, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so mascarpone is basically just cream cheese. Um, and good luck in finding a good one because they're nasty. <laughs> Gary just rolled her eyes at me again. That's like the third time in one episode where she rolled her eyes at me. I'm so winning this. Yeah. Soft cheeses are all good. Oh, and again, and I know I keep talking about Trader Joe's, and if you don't have one, I'm sorry. But in Trader Joe's, they have triple and double cream brie, and double and triple cream gouda, and dub- and it, it's just like okay, gouda is another way of saying gouda for people who are not familiar. Un- unbelievably awesome that they have these like not just fat cheese, but like double fat, triple fat cheese. Fantastic. Um, we should start okay. a, a, a rest or a grocery chain called Trader Kevin's just to compete with Trader Joe's and then put them in places that don't have Trader Joe's <laughs> like or Trader Ricky's. That's what we should have. Um, OK, what else? So soft cheeses. What's an example of soft cheese? It's like, like brie, cream cheeses. Are there other soft cheeses that you can think of that you're talking well, about? Well, I mean, there's things like Stilton, which is kind of half and half. It's not. Fontina is one of my favorites. I love Fontina. Fontina. I gorgeous um gorgonzola is another good one too gorgonzola so the one and, and a lot of the soft cheeses are moldy they have like the green and blue molds growing in them and some people love them and some people don't blue cheese for example full of mold um it's an acquired taste not one that i particularly have um and also while we're talking about soft cheeses brie there was a question in the facebook group um, a few days ago about whether you eat the rind or not. And <laughs> okay. the answer is you can if you like, but you don't have to. It is edible. And it's right. literally just the, the the rind is like the crust of mold that right. grows on the cheese as it ages. So it's actually the cheese. It's no different to the cheese. It's just the cheese that's got old and fermented and right it's crusty it's, it, it's so you can eat that or not i i don't particularly care for it because it tends to be stronger tasting but that's right. just me but if you want to eat it the rind you perfectly welcome for for folks who uh are of my age or more senior and back in the day before they had stuff that was instant that you could make for dessert type things like instant pudding um and you had to make it on the stove if you left it sitting, it would develop this film on top. That's essentially the same thing. It's an oxidized layer 
of of what like Carrie's talking about with the with you know the rind on a brie or a soft cheese. It's that oxidized layer there. And there are some people who swear by it, saying that it's even more because the the air dehydrates it. It pulls the water out. That's why it develops that kind of rind thing. So that it's it's more concentrated in terms of the good bacteria or whatever. And they swear by it. They say they say it's fantastic. Um, and for a lot of people, it just comes down to palatability. They just don't like the texture. They just don't like the, the way it feels. So and while we're talking about rinds, just if you're new to cheese or new to different cheeses other than, you know, cheddar and the basics, some cheese come in what looks like a rind, like Edam, Gouda, or two. Um, Gouda, for those who are not um, There's another one uh, that... Port Salut, which is another one of my favorites, gorgeous, gorgeous cheese. Those are wax and you don't eat those. Right. So if they're like brightly colored, orange, red, whatever, nope, don't eat those. Take, cut that off or peel it off. But if it's white, like on the brie, then that's fine to eat it's, if, if it, you yeah, like it. And if it looks powdery, if it's white and it looks powdery, that's probably a good, probably a good. Good, good indication that it's edible. If and it's, if it's got blue or green things running through it, all good. Right. If that's your if it's taste red and if it's red tea. and shiny, it's not good, right? It's, yeah. it's not good. also if you if you build a candle out of it and it works, probably not going to be something you want to <laughs> eat. So just that's just a pro tip right there. Um, okay, so is is that essentially the the general rundown of of good and bad dairy? Yes. Okay. All right. So you know what time it is now then. That is the signal for Motivational Monday. Motivation Monday. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about do not let others' behavior destroy your inner peace. Who wants to go first? That reminds me of my favorite book, which is The Four Agreements by Miguel Don Miguel Ruiz. Yes. And the, I think it's the second agreement, which is nothing anyone else does has anything to do with you. I have paraphrased that badly, but that's the essence <laughs> it, of it. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Nothing that anyone else does or says is anything to do with you. Yeah. And that what reminded me of when, you know, when you said don't let others' behavior affect you, it, the whole point about agreement number two is don't take anything personally right there's and probably one of the hardest hardest things to do but it does if you if you crack that nut i it, i will say world peace obviously not but but inner, you know inner peace, peace. In, inner, peace. In your, in your inner peace will be yours right so um I want to say it again. Do not let the behaviors, the behavior of others destroy your own inner peace, right? That's <clears throat> so it doesn't matter what other people are doing. You can control how you react to it, right? And, and it's better for you to uh, spend time this week, today and the rest of this week, recognizing how you are allowing other people to control your behaviors or control how you feel. Um, and then do something about it. You can you can realize no, I'm not going to let them control me. I'm going to I'm going to take control and I'm going to be happy or I'm going to be fulfilled or I'm going to be whatever you want to fill in that word that is a much more positive way of living. So, re re yes, regardless of what anyone else does or says, you have the power to choose how you are going to respond to it right. or not respond to it. You you have that power. I think for me the key was forcing myself to introduce a gap between the stimulus and my response. That's so a good, actually, that's a and good point. And it's kind of the whole counting to 10 thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that it is it it makes you put a gap in between, you know, so you don't then have a knee jerk reaction. You actually go <gasps> no, I'm not going to go there. Right. And walk away. Right. It's, it always pays to give yourself a couple of beats, right? Like take a, take a step back before you immediately feel like you need to respond or whatever, take a breath, recover, you know, that kind of thing. Cause really the whole, there's another saying that goes along with this is 
he who angers you controls you or she who angers you controls you. And that's the truth of it, right? So you be in control and you decide whether or not you're going to allow the behavior of other people to steal the joy that you've got inside, right? So that is our advice. That's our, our, our hope for you this week as you go about. I hope that you start today and I hope you focus on it throughout the week. And uh, we, we think you're awesome for it. Yes, we do. All right. So that's the Motivation Monday. Uh, should we uh, should we end it? Should we like end the the motivation Monday with the outro too? So it'd be like, and now we no longer talk about it. Now we talk about whatever else. All right. So there's our our hard our hard cut. No. Yes. Yes. Love it. Let's do that. <laughs> Carrie could not care less. Uh, I have a whole board full of sound effects like this. <laughs> That I've been waiting to use. Uh, you but, could have used that about <laughs> 12 times today already. Uh, and you didn't. What's up with that? Well, I, I didn't I didn't find it was an opportune time. So um, anyway, so that's Motivation Monday. Um, and we've just get, we've given you a rundown of what the good and the bad dairies are. So and we'll go into detail on other episodes, yeah. but especially with cheese. But for now, that's an overview that I hope you'll find useful. All right. Well, then in that case, Carrie, uh, as always, it was a pleasure. And uh, we guess we'll talk to you next week. See ya. All right. All right, so another trip to the kitchen all done. There you go, all about the dairies. As I said, we could really use your help if you want to give us a good rating and review over on iTunes. Make sure you're logged in. Make sure you're on your computer, Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Find it, review it. Nice five-star rating would be fantastic. It would really help us out. If you want to connect with us on social, me- on social media, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Keto Van Kitchen on Twitter, Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Instagram. I'm sorry it's so confusing. I didn't make the rules. I just have to live by them. Also, Keto Evangelist Kitchen uh, is an awesome group uh, on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash Keto Evangelist Kitchen. And um, Carrie's awesome, isn't she? Yeah, I like her. So anyway... Folks, kids, ladies, gentlemen, this has been the uh, the dairy episode, one of many, I'm sure, but rest assured there will be more. And until next time, you keep being awesome. Powered by Ketones.